I've talked about virtual sciences before. Kinda. You see, I did a geophysical survey of Azeroth based on the prior work of James Wallace. But, you see, I wanted to see if I could do it again. So I was going to do it in DCUO, which has been the game I've been playing a lot lately. I ran into one problem, though. Standardization. Back in 2008, James Wallace gave a talk in which he did a geophysical survey of Azeroth. It's been done a lot since then with a lot of games, but to echo a sentiment from Wallace himself, it's hard to measure something that doesn't exist while using a real-world scale. And here's where things are going to get a little interesting, because science should be demonstrable. And as much as you could argue that cartography is as much an art as it is a science, for the sake of this video we're going to be talking about it as a science. And this is where we're going to start running into problems with DCUO, because DCUO has no set measurements in it. Wallace based his calculations on one premise, that tunes in World of Warcraft walk at the same speed as normal human beings in the real world. It wasn't until a later expansion that Blizzard posted distances and yards for some of their spells, and through that I found out that tunes actually walk twice the speed as real people. So just using simple formulas, techniques, presto, we find Azeroth is a little larger than Wallace first measured. But not by much. This demonstrates the problem with doing hard science in a virtual world. I've searched the auction house, I have yet to find a ruler, let alone an odometer, and this makes a problem. Almost all non-ruler measuring techniques have one thing in common. You need to know at least one measurement to calculate the rest. I could try other techniques as well, but... Uh, I don't think the accounter for the speed of sound so sonar is out. Bullets, arrows, and hand blasters seem to do immediate damage, so I can't time those, assuming, of course, standard grain weights on arrows and powder loads. I could even go into the meta and tinker with draw distances, but they don't list those in feet and meters. And hell, if I could find a horse or two, that would solve a lot of my problems. This leaves me looking for standards, because DCOO is based on the modern world. So therefore, I should be able to look in the virtual world and find things that are the same size as they are in the real world. <sighs> should. I ended up thinking in terms of industrial standards. You see, even across manufacturers, most containers have a standard size. 55-gallon drums, for example. They have to be the same size so they can hold the same volume and for shipping and storage purposes. Fortunately for me, 55-gallon drums are all over the place in Gotham and Metropolis, but after having an average height character stand next to one, these things look huge. I also looked at the shipping containers, which are also all over Gotham. One problem, they're wider than they are tall. In the real world, it's the other way around, so they can be shipped on standard trucks, so that's out the window, too. I even went as far as to look at the highways that cut through Metropolis and Gotham. You see, the U.S. Highway Department has a standard for highway lanes of 12 feet wide, but standing in the middle of this abandoned highway, it doesn't look like 12 feet. My point is that, short of making some huge leap of faith assumption here, it's going to be almost impossible to make a geophysical survey of virtual Metropolis. The punchline is that all it would take is one measurement. Uh, for example, let's say I knew the range on um, hand blasters. Yes, I asked. I never got a response. The other problem is, if I do make an assumption, which one do I work from? Because none of them are congruent with each other. I mean, let's take a look at the 55-gallon drums. If we use that, then on that model, Batman's only 5'9", and we all know he's really 6'2". Actually, I suppose I could use Batsy as a reference and measure the world in Batmans, but comic book characters seem to grow and shrink based on the artist drawing them. And considering the game is a DC-based game, a sliding scale like this makes a lot more sense. It just needs to look cool, not be accurate to reality. Uh, the best example of this is probably on the moon. When you go to the moon's surface, you can see Earth from there. Now, let me juxtapose this with an image taken on Apollo's 8 missions, and... You know, I don't even want to think about what the tides would be like if you had the moon that close to the... Okay, before I get completely derailed on this, the point that I'm getting at is that we don't have the answers. We're waiting on one key piece of information. Once we have that piece of information, everything opens up. But until then, we can make educated guesses till the cows come home. But ultimately, they're going to be wrong. So right now, yeah, that's just part of science. It's part of science is sometimes admitting that we don't have the answers. Yet. <laughs> Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. So speed up that moon footage again. And the Earth is rotating in the wrong direction. No. Yeah, it bugs me.